Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionellos one more time, continuing our discussion about those pulmonology topics. In the previous video, we started talking about sarcoidosis. Today, I'll talk about how to diagnose and manage this restrictive lung disease. With that being said, now let's get started. Diagnosis of sarcoidosis. Clinically, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. First, you have to rule out every other cause of granuloma. You have the caseating granulomas and non-caseating granuloma. Just a few examples, caseating, tuberculosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidioidomycosis, paracoccidioidomycosis, tertiary syphilis. So tertiary syphilis could be either one. If it's the gamma, it's a caseating granuloma and it has endotrites obliterans. But if it's diffuse syphilitic reaction, it's non-caseating granuloma. I've asked this question about tertiary syphilis on my Facebook page. Do you know how many students answered it correctly? The answer is zero. All of them said, oh, non-caseating granuloma. It depends, honey. By the way, you should follow me on Facebook. Let's do those fungi. So here is the map of the United States. God bless America. On the East Coast, you get blastomycosis. In the Midwest, so Ohio River Valley, Mississippi River Valley, you get the histoplasmosis. And histo has a mnemonic, everything is an H. Histoplasmosis hides in Ohio. It also hides in the macrophages associated with two animals. One of them you see during day, it's called starlings. And the other one you see at night, if you see it at all, and those are the bats. From the mountains to the prairies, his to hides in the caves. And here is another song. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee. In the lakes of Minnesota, if you swim in fresh water, you get Negularia foliary. In the hills of Tennessee, you either have the black widow spider or the brown recluse spider bites. Medicine has ruined my life. Whenever I hear a song today, I just think of those medical topics. It's crazy, guys. How about coccidioidomycosis, California, and maybe Arizona? Please remember earthquakes. How about paracoccidioidomycosis? You'll find this in South America. non caseating granuloma. We have Crohn's disease, foreign body granuloma, brucellosis, and even hypersensitivity pneumonitis. By the way, I have compared between hypersensitivity pneumonitis and sarcoidosis in one of my previous videos. Serum, you have high ACE level. This is non-specific, but very useful to follow up sarcoidosis. If ACE was normal and then starts to rise again, it means sarcoidosis is getting active again. Bad news. Hypercalcemia, and we have discussed this in the previous videos here on protein electrophoresis, you'll find polyclonal gammopathy, which is a hypergamma globulinemia. On bronchial alveolar lavage, there is the CD4 to CDH ratio, also known as helper to cytotoxic ratio or helper to suppressor ratio. In sarcoidosis, it's high. It's more than 4 to 1. Translation, there are more CD4 cells than CD8 cells, and those CD4 cells are the ones creating the non-caseating granuloma. Unlike hypersensitivity pneumonitis, because in hypersensitivity pneumonitis, the ratio is less than 1 to 1. Translation, there is more CD8 cells than CD4 cells in hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which also has a non caseating granuloma. Here you'll find hypercalciuria, and you'll find polyuria, and you might find kidney stones. What type of kidney stones? Calcium kidney stones. Are they acidic or alkaline? Well, it depends on what type of calcium stones. If it's calcium oxalate, the urine is usually acidic. If it's calcium phosphate, the urine is usually alkaline. Immunological testing, there is something called energy. Energy, I think of it as the opposite of energy and urge. Okay, what do you mean? I mean there is decreased immunological response. Huh? Why? Because the non-caseating granulomas have consumed all of the CD40 helper cells. We don't have any military fighters anymore. This will lead to decreased serum total T helper cell count, leading to energy because all of them are hiding in the granuloma, not in the blood where they should be. If you do a skin test, you'll find energy, which means decreased reaction to common skin antigens such as candida. Pulmonary function test, you'll find restrictive pattern. DLCO is low because the problem is in the lung. AA gradient is prolonged or widened because the problem is in the lung. Radiologically, chest x-ray, if you look at the lung, interstitial involvement, reticular densities and reticulonodular. Reticular are like this, crisscrossing lines. And the reticulonodulars are the lines and some 
dots reticulo nodular and you'll find some alveolar infiltrates hyalur and mediastinal lymphadenopathy it's enlarged we call it potato nose are these painful or painless they are painless but you're not going to palpate them because you cannot palpate the hyalur lymph nodes because there is a sternum get your head out of your sphincter you can do bronchoscopy with biopsy and you can biopsy those lymph nodes You'll find non caseating granuloma with epithelial histiocytes, which are the macrophages, multinuclear giant cells, known as Langerhans giant cells. Schumann bodies are laminated calcium concentrations, and you can find asteroid bodies are stellate inclusions. EBUS or endobronchial ultrasound sampling to take a sample of the lymph node, you can do it under ultrasound guidance. Complications, you can find interstitial pulmonary fibrosis or cold pulmonary. Lung fibrosis will lead to right heart cannot pump blood against the fibrose lung, leading to right ventricular hypertrophy. When there is right ventricular hypertrophy, eventually leads to right sudden heart failure, leading to jugular venous distension, ankle edema, and liver distension. Is this edema a transudate or an exudate? And the answer is transudate. How to manage sarcoidosis? Most cases are self-limiting. Really? Yep, if you leave them, uh, they will resolve on their own and no treatment is necessary. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. If it's self-limiting, just leave it alone. But if it's severe, now you should treat. Okay, but what do you mean by severe? I mean persistent hypercalcemia plus organ involvement other than lung because sarcoidosis is always going to involve the lung. When you see another organs and the lung, this is getting ugly. How do I treat severe sarcoidosis? Oral corticosteroids. These are magic, man. They do improve the symptoms and the spirometry results, but they do not induce remission. Are there other options than steroids? Yep. Hydroxychloroquine, methotrexate, infliximab, thalidomide, respiratory corticotropin, which is ACTH injection. If the sarcoid only involves the bronchi, you can do inhaled corticosteroids rather than oral. My favorite part, clinical pearl sarcoidosis always involves the lung. If it's not in the lung, it's not sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis causes restrictive cardiomyopathy and restrictive lung disease. The most common non-infectious granuloma disease in the United States is sarcoidosis. The most common cause of non-infectious hepatitis in the United States is sarcoidosis. The most commonly involved organ sarcoidosis is the lung. And the most common symptom is shorts of breath, not cough, not hemoptysis, not sputum, just dyspnea. The most common eye abnormalities is uveitis. Bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathies tend to disappear as the disease progresses. And here is an idea about an excellent exam question. They will give you the typical patient of sarcoidosis. And then they will tell you the disease is severe and involving all the organs. And they will say which of the following is expected as the disease progresses. And the answer is going to be disappearance of the bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. No student will answer this correctly. In cases of TB, TNF-alpha maintains the granuloma. Aspergilloma usually arises in previous lung cavities due to TB or sarcoid or other fungal disease. So these issues produces a cavity. Now aspergilloma is going to come on top of the cavity. Skin involvement in sarcoidosis could be erythema nodosum or lupus pernio. Erythema nodosum carries good prognosis also known as Lofgren syndrome. If you see lupus pernio, this is poor prognosis, and my mnemonic is nodosum is noble, pernio is pernicious. If you see a typical patient with Lofgren syndrome, i.e. African-American female with interstitial lung disease, bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy, erythema nodosum, uveitis, you already have your diagnosis. You do not have to perform a lung biopsy. Rule number one, according to the father of medicine, Mr. Hippocrates, do no harm. If you already have your diagnosis, you got it. So this is from medical ethics. From economics, we are living in a world with scarce resources which have alternative uses. So why biopsy this patient when other patients can actually benefit from the biopsy? And as your grandma said, if the diagnosis is ample, there is no need to take a sample. And as your grandpa told you, if the diagnosis is clinical, there is no need to be hysterical. Coal worker pneumoconiosis has no hyalur involvement. Silicosis does have hyalur involvement and it's egg shell calcification of the hyalur lymph node. Sarcoidosis has hyalur involvement, bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. If you take a biopsy, you'll find non caseating granuloma. From the lakes of Minnesota, there is Negleria foliae. To the hills of Tennessee, and here is the brown recluse spider bite across the plains of Texas. 
They have Vibrio Volnificus there. From sea to shining sea. I mean, he means oceans. Okay, from the Atlantic Ocean, where you have Blastomycosis, to the Pacific Ocean, where you have Coccidioide Mycosis. And then he continues, from Detroit down to Houston, both have occupational lung diseases. And from New York to LA, same problems. Blasto, New York, and Coccidioide Mycosis in LA, especially after earthquakes. That's a great song for medicine. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like. You can follow me on Facebook or Instagram. I have more than 100 cases on Facebook. Go to Dropbox. I have premium videos, cases, notes, PDF notes, and the slide of this video. All available at patreon.com slash medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. From the mountains to the prairie.